I do believe there's been a, a rise in uh, the maker movement, as it's called. Um, a lot of it is just that there's the, the whole artisan or epicurean type of thing, or like where it's um, focused on handmade and getting back to that instead of just being manufactured in some machine. And a lot of that has come back, and I think people are getting more exposed to it, so they want like a, a handmade soap or a handmade candle or a handmade wood, uh, woodworking item. Not every school has a wood shop. Not every school has a robotics team or a robotics lab or electronics lab and that type of thing. We're at the Dallas Makerspace right now. We are possibly the biggest makerspace slash hackerspace in North America. I'm Alex Rhodes. I'm a board member here with uh, the Dallas Makerspace. Uh, my name is Haley Moore. I work for a company called Lady Rain Studios that's come out of the makerspace. We kind of fill that niche for people who are actually out of school a lot of times. We do have a 16-year-old cutoff for people to come here on their own. They can come with their parent and do things together, but um, it's really when you get out of school, you lose access to a lot of tools. And that's where we focus more on adults getting back into something, I should say, or experiencing something new. We have a 16,000, a little bit over 16,000 square foot building full of all different types of tools, different capabilities from 3D printing to electronics to woodworking to metalworking to machining, pottery, that type of stuff. We have a little bit over a thousand members and each one of them pays anywhere from $35 to $50 a month. Most of our members are a $50 a month membership and that will um, give them 24-7, 365 access through an RFID card reader at the front door that allows them to access our tools and access um, uh, our community, really. Everything here is volunteer run, right? um, but we do have just regular uh, impromptu type uh, events that uh, people will kind of congregate around. Uh, but we do run everything by a committee, and in each one of those committees has a chair, and that chair is pretty much in, in charge of that area. So the, the woodworking will have a person who's in a chair for the woodworking area, and they're the ones who decides what tools we really buy, what, uh, making sure things are maintained, making sure we have the proper classes in uh, scope so that people who come off are the brand new members and they want to get into woodworking, but they've never touched a woodworking tool in their life. So we want to make sure that they have at least a very small ground footing on how the table saw works and how some of the routers work and that type of thing, and make sure that they know um, the basics of that and what up cutting is and uh, climb cutting, I should say. Um, and that, that's that's discussed in a, a class that they teach weekly, and then from there it ramps up into more advanced. Things. The way that we've gotten where we are with this is by having as open a community as we could possibly be and making the uh, making the barrier to entry really, really low um, so that anyone can participate. And you do that, you start to build up the tools, you start to build up the energy, and everything kind of explodes from there. So we do have uh, people who have successfully funded Kickstarters out of our, our building and um, from a wide range of things from uh, fashion items to uh, electronic items and they they were all fully funded um, and it's, it's been great and they wouldn't have been able to do that without the makerspace.